What's going on everybody, Kwaku here, back with another video. Today I have to talk to you all about the bloated mess that is Microsoft Edge. There is a few things that you've probably seen some articles online about uh, turning off this and that to make it more palatable. Uh, but in this video, I kind of want to go into uh, things that I would watch out for because I don't personally use Edge. I do use Brave Browser um, instead of Edge, but this is what I would customize on Edge. So the first thing you want to do is go into these three dots. Of course, one thing I want to tell you is uh, the version of Edge that we are running. Uh, basically, if I hit settings and I go to about edge, you can see the version of edge I'm running. And in fact, you'll see it pop up on the screen so that you can see it yourself without having to zoom in. Uh, but you go to settings and then you end up here. Okay. This is the first area that you need to pay attention to. This is where your profile section is on edge. If you are running the version that I'm running. Um, so the next thing here is straight down here, which is share browsing data with other Windows features. Click that and then make sure it is checked off. Uh, basically, this way, the browsing data on your uh, on, that you're doing with Edge, it doesn't influence other things on Windows, because as you know, Windows 11 is in a way a a kind of like an advertisement OS in a way. There's a lot of ads kind of hidden in there. They're not those banner ads like the internet, but they're just ads. So you want to check this and turn this off. Make sure it's in this position to see that it's off. Otherwise, you'll see that when you hit search over here and some other things, you'll start seeing uh, related results, um, trending searches and things like that based on your browsing data. And if you don't want that kind of thing, that's probably why you're here. So that's something that I would say. Um, another thing too is the import browsing data area. Uh, I typically never import browsing data. I don't really like it always being imported everywhere I go. So I kind of just leave that off as well. This is all part of the Microsoft account system and everything like that. Uh, another thing that I do is go over to privacy search and services. And this is where the tracking and the nitty gritty stuff start coming in, but I'll break it down real quickly. In a nutshell, I just keep it on strict. I keep every as much as possible filtered out just so I don't see as much as possible. Um, then some trackers that are blocked, exceptions. I try to make sure there are no exceptions in terms of uh, tracking prevention or anything like that. I like to make sure everything is uh, just gone. Also sending do not track requests. Obviously, if you've heard the Vergecast or you've heard anything about do not track that in the UK or the EU, um, Basically, Apple puts it on iOS so that way it, it prompts sites to tr do not track, telling them that you don't want them tracking you. But in a nutshell, do not track requests could work. Nobody knows if they do work because um, it's kind of like me telling you, hey, I don't want you following me. It doesn't mean that you're not going to follow me from a further distance so I don't notice, but it's up to the person, the publisher, whoever it is, the website to track you or not and to accept your requests. So yeah, a lot of the methods I just say, just keep this on, but don't expect any changes in terms of what you see in terms of tracking being changed from this. Um, another thing that is there too, it says choose what to clear every time you close the browser. So if I click this here, you can choose actually to turn off browsing history and everything like that. And honestly, I would recommend turning off most of these stuff, especially browsing history, uh, where it closes it when you close your thing your uh, browser cookies and other site data um, signs you out of most sites. But again, if you have like, uh, I don't know, Bitwarden like I do or a uh, last pass or password manager, you don't really need to worry about using edges built in password manager or anything like that. Um, you can just keep clicking on it and it just signs you in anyway. So it's pretty quick. You can keep that off uh, over here for me. If you are on the inside of program, uh, it doesn't matter what channel you're running. Uh, you'll notice here that, uh, I cannot actually turn off my diagnostic data because it's based on me being part of the Windows Insider program. So it says here, Microsoft for the EULA for using Edge um, actually has two privacy statements. One is for just using Edge, which is right here, which you cannot turn off or you cannot do anything. You can just read more about. So there's nothing you can do about that. And then two is the optional diagnostic data. You see for me, it is grayed out. And that's what I was talking about. That is because I'm part of the insider program. So as part of those kind of rules of testing builds of windows, you have to turn on diagnostic data. Um, unfortunately, optional diagnostic data is just part of the program. 
So I can live with that because that was a choice I chose to make. But if you're just running a basic laptop or computer that you bought from a store and you're not part of any insider program, uh, you can make sure, I would say, make sure you check it so that it's on as well in this blue position, um, just so that way it's good to go. Uh, search and service improvement. Again, another thing where uh, you don't, if you don't really care, you're watching this video because you probably don't care about helping improve service in terms of search and things. So I would just make sure uh, this is checked to be turned off. So now one thing you'll notice here also as I'm going through just kind of scrolling down, you can see all the craziness that is here. Uh, enhance your security in the web. Um, so I can turn it this on. So let's turn this mode on to web search the web more securely. And then this one adds mitigations and everything like that. So actually, you know what? I missed this one. I'm going to turn this on um, just because it basically uses everything being like in private browsing when you're on edge. So everything is just less so being tracked on your side. If you're a network engineer, you can see whether this is working. And please tell me because I would very much like to know. Block potentially unwanted apps. It's block downloads of low reputation apps that may cause unexpected behaviors. If you're a person who's like me and tests a lot of software, I would keep this thing on or off rather in this position. Uh, but if you're a person who's like my mom and just uses like Word in the browser, like Brave and things like that, I would turn it on um, just because you don't want, say, some you know younger child that you know that randomly snooping on your computer, downloading something random that might be a virus. So if you don't know the difference between how to delete a virus or you don't know how to suspect a virus, I would turn this on just so that way you're more filtered just like that. Um, now we're going into cookies and site permissions here. So if we go all the way up here, this is another interesting thing um, here. Uh, most of these things, the main thing I would basically tell you is um, just set it so that way it always asks you first. So for location, camera, microphone, uh, motion and light sensors, notifications, JavaScript, I just leave on, but you can click it and then you can choose to just turn off JavaScript, which will break some sites. Ads are blocked for me. Um, of course, if I click this, it says block on sites that show intrusive ads or misleading ads, or you can just set specific websites that you want to block those ads. Um, serial ports, sites that want to access serial ports and all this kind of stuff. Let's say you use a virtual machine on the, on the web uh, and you access a virtual machine on the web. Sometimes they might detect, I don't know if virtual machines do this, but sometimes they might be able to let you use your serial port, like your USB or something. You can do that as well. So, or this one right here is very scary. Augmented reality, ask when a site wants to create a 3D map of your surroundings or track camera position. Um, definitely, definitely, uh, it says will block if turned off or you can have it ask if turned on. I'm actually gonna turn this off because that's another setting that wasn't there before that I definitely do not like to see same for the virtual reality stuff when a site wants to use your virtual reality devices and data turn that off as well there's a lot of just stuff that i just i just don't like allow sites to install payment handlers uh off as well um, that might break you um being able to pay for certain things but if you know how to do this you know how to get back to getting here uh when the time comes and then images show all you can choose to block all images to show up and so on. So that's like the meat of it um, for in terms of privacy. Um, another annoyance thing about this Edge browser is the Edge bar. Um, basically, it's a bar that will pop up on your desktop if you turn it on. I would tell you to turn off everything that makes that runs when your computer starts. And I'll show you what the Edge bar looks like. This is the Edge bar right there. Actually, I don't know if it's even showing up. Rather, let me make sure it's showing up. All right, so right here, this is the edge bar. Basically, the edge bar, bar in a way is like Windows 10's old search and also search that pops up on Windows 11. Basically, it allows you to essentially uh, search with Edge and go to your quick web apps and stuff with Edge. In a way, it's like if you had a Chromebook, um, but it was only running Edge completely. Um, in a way, it's like that, but in Windows, at least to me. So for that, if you don't need this edge bar, honestly, I would just exit out and just never click on this button to open up the edge bar in the first place. Because if you don't need it, you don't need it. Last thing here, we have your system and performance here. Um, another thing Microsoft kind of really pushes you to, to do tweaks with. Um, again, only if you know about what you're doing, you should touch this. But for the most part, following this basic thing of what I have here, um, 
is all you really need to do. Um, so turn on efficiency mode, uh, help minimize power usage by saving computer resources. Uh, depends on uh, your device. I can turn that on as well. Um, it says here, improve PC gaming with efficiency mode. Uh, I don't know why if efficiency mode is already on that you wouldn't just have this on here, but I kept it on because I want Edge to use less resources when I'm playing a game because Edge for some reason is always running just because a lot of elements in Windows 11 run off of the Edge engine. Uh, fade sleeping tabs, basically if a tab is not being used for a long time, you'll see it fade away a little bit. Um, but when you go back and click it, it'll re wake up and then it'll start utilizing way more resources. Um, but in general, that's about it. There's not too much here um, in terms of what I wanted to show, but it's just some of the annoying things related to uh, Microsoft Edge that Microsoft just wants. Oh yeah, actually, you know what? There's not everything here. This is another thing here, this other bar. This is not the Edge bar. This is just a bar that is on Edge. It just has quick shortcuts to various elements like search, which makes it, which is weird because it's another way to search. If you don't know already, in your taskbar, in your URL bar up here, your address bar, you can search just by typing in words here. You can see, I type in J, it goes to JCPenney. Same here, if I type in J, it's gonna see JCPenney. So really this doesn't make any sense why it's there. And then also there's an inconsistency up here where this line does not line up with this line, but that's just me. Um, another thing, you just got a bunch of random stuff here that you can deal with, your discover feed and stuff, which is basically when you open up a new tab on Edge and pick whether or not, when you scroll down, you'll see similar things. If I hit discover, you'll see similar things, content just like that. So in general, if you see this ever, just hit this button here and hide sidebar. Otherwise you can go into settings and then you can you know, play around with it, show sidebar. I'll just turn it off because I don't want to see it. Um, but other than that, that is, should be everything you really care about to get rid of, uh, to turn off on edge, just because there's a lot of stuff that just goes on on edge and they keep adding features even if you don't care about them. So. Yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. How do you feel about Microsoft Edge? Is it your primary browser? Not because you're forced to use it, but just because um, you choose to use it. Let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.